Uh, South Africa is preparing to build several more plants to augment the availability of nuclear energy. No money has been set aside yet, but ESCOM, in charge of procurement, is already looking at nuclear sites. Estimates of the eventual costs uh, range from 650 billion rand to 1.2 trillion, which is around South Africa's annual budget. Now, to put that into perspective, the arms deal was about 13 percent, uh, a mere 13 percent of our budget in 1999. So is nuclear the right road for us to follow? There are many against. But tonight we're speaking to an advocate for nuclear energy from Australia. Ben Hurd is the director of a think tank, Bright New World. Welcome to you. And just to clarify, we're not related in, no in any way. Um, uh, ben, why are you so passionate about nuclear? You, you've consulted on this. Um, you're a proponent. Uh, Presumably, you really believe in, in what you're advocating. I do now, but it, it wasn't always that way. I spent a lot of years in South Australia being quite profoundly anti-nuclear. It's really the way I was raised in uh, part of the traditional environmentalist scene. Mm. Being anti-nuclear was part and parcel of that package. But because I was trying to pursue environmentalism and sustainability in a professional manner, mm. I went and did further study. I started doing the consulting work. And when I was doing the, cl the climate change projects, when I was seeing just how much climate change we have coming down the pipeline, and then looking at the suite of possible solutions that are on the table, uh, which was generally renewable energy, energy efficiency, and maybe carbon offsetting. Mm. There was just a terrible mismatch between the solutions we have available and the size of the problem, particularly in the energy sector. So it forced me to take a fresh look at nuclear power. And I found that just about everything I thought I knew was wrong. And so since then, I've been quite an outspoken proponent. And I'm particularly interested in the path for countries like South Africa at junctions like this, where they have such a huge decision in front of them that has consequential de decisions for South Africa's future, mm. but also our common future in terms of managing climate change. So the understanding has always been that nuclear is is clean uh, until something goes wrong, and, and then it goes uh, very badly wrong. So after Fukushima, uh, even countries that, that were going the nuclear route, uh, adding to their grid, like Germany, pulled back. Mm. Uh, what about the risks that, that that highlighted? Yeah, it's very important to ask, you know, when they do go wrong in that way, what are we actually talking about? And what we saw in Fukushima was very, very old generations of reactors experiencing just about the worst possible type of nuclear accident. So it's not an unknown anymore. We've seen what that is. And what we actually saw was no fatalities. Mm. Didn't we, we think that before Fukushima, though? I'm that sorry? We, that we knew what could go wrong and, well, and we no, had the, taken plans against it. Yeah, well, see, the sort of accidents that had occurred before Fukushima, particularly Chernobyl, if you look at that, was a type of reactor design that wasn't being rolled out in any type of Western nation. Mm. So we hadn't really had that type of incident in a developed nation with a reactor of that approximate type. Sure. Now we've seen it and now we know. And what we see is that we're incurring so much more harm by our coal-fired sector when it's working properly than the very worst day in the nuclear sector. Mm. You know, we're incurring everyday damage in air pollution, climate change and other forms of pollution. And we have the opportunity for what is actually an incredibly safe power source, an incredibly clean power source. And crucially for South Africa, something that's extremely reliable and can meet the enormous scale of need in this country. So it, it plays a potentially crucial role. The, the best option seems uh, renewable energy. The, the sun, the wind, nobody can fear radiation. Um, it's, it's freely available. Uh, it, it's getting cheaper, it's getting better, but you're looking at the shortcomings of, of our renewable uh, energy sector. Just tell me about that. Well, look, as I see it, the renewable energy sector in South Australia, in South Africa, I should say, is destined to play a much greater role. And that should be encouraged and it should be facilitated through good planning, but it does get to a limit. Those low cost variable renewable energy sources like solar PV and wind are now providing relatively low cost electricity, but on a variable basis, not on a reliable basis. Mm. You cannot base an entire robust system on that. So I would foresee that you could probably have a tenfold expansion, maybe even a 20 fold expansion of the wind and solar capacity in South Africa. And you're still going to have about 80% of the demand that has to be met by a different type of supply. Something that's more reliable, something that's available all year round, something that business can invest in with confidence mm. because they know that the supply is always there. And in terms of our common climate change future, it needs to be something that is also zero carbon. Now, the best option that we have to fit that bill to work with the renewable technologies is nuclear. And the, the trick is getting that blend appropriate for each individual country. Isn't the technology, I, I mean, in the world, it seems like there's a, an explosion. Things are moving very quickly, advances. So, so the fear here is that we'll pump uh, a trillion rand in, into nuclear and then suddenly wind uh, uh, and, and those sort of uh, energies are, are suddenly 
efficient, reliable, mm. um, all the time, and, mm. and we've wasted that and, and not harnessed the, the trend that we're seeing. Something you can feel confident in in South Africa right now is that you probably cannot underinvest in your energy sector. You have so much need in terms of the current levels of consumption, the forecast population growth, and the number of people who are unemployed, the amount of new industry that needs to be created, the amount of new manufacturing that needs to be created. There is so much space in your market for new supply right now that that will not prove to be an underinvestment. And the other thing that's crucial to understand is that these developments can happen together. Mm -hmm. Just because you are pursuing a nuclear program does not prevent you from pursuing an aggressive rollout of solar PV, solar hot water systems and onshore wind, all of which I would see as having a strong role in South Africa. Right now, the need is so great um, you've got so much catching up to do and such a, a lot of social and economic building to do that that investment will be solid. The trick will be getting the right package of investment. Can you wade into a big argument here in, in finality, Ben? Uh, beyond just the energy, uh, coming with a nuclear build, it, it's big. So, so you have a limited amount of, of players. This will be in government's hands, maybe in Russia's hands, mm. uh, helping us, rather than hundreds or, or thousands of private players adding to our grid. Uh, we know these big projects can often uh, go beyond uh, time frames, cost frames, and, and corruption, kickbacks, all of that's involved yes. in, a, in a big, and nuclear has to be big. Yes, and that's exactly the risk that you need to manage. But it's crucial to understand that no matter what the source of supply, you still need that scale of energy investment. You would need 9,600 megawatts of something. And whatever it will be, it will be huge and it will be very, very expensive. These are going to be large projects. In nuclear, if you can get a proper, open, transparent tender process with four to five global players, you will get a proper um, competitive process. Mm. They will bring you a good deal, a good financing deal. They will bring good labor opp uh, opportunities to South Africa. They will bring training and upskilling and operations. That's the sort of deal that South Africa needs to get from a properly open global competitive tender. And four to five players competing against each other can deliver that. The UAE achieved that type of a deal by choosing KEPCO for, to deliver their program. They got a build, own, operate model uh, at a very good price that's going to mm. serve the UAE really well through that open competitive tender process. That is crucial. The outcome can be bad, but if the risk is managed well, the outcome can be excellent. Mm.